Hey everybody, welcome on back to the read-through of Eloquent JavaScript. This is chapter 2, Program Structure. And my heart glows bright red under my filmy, translucent skin, and they have to administer 10cc of JavaScript to get me to come back. I respond well to toxins in the blood. Man, that stuff will kick the peaches right out your gills. Why? Why is Poignant Guide to Ruby, which is another programming language. Um, yeah, JavaScript gets some hate uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, in this chapter, we'll start to do things that can actually be called programming. We will expand our command of the JavaScript language beyond the nouns and sentence fragments we've seen so far to the point where we can express meaningful prose. Uh, so they're drawing a little bit of a, uh, you know, regular language and programming languages, which is cool. So expressions and statements. In chapter one, we made values and applied operators to them to get new values. Creating values like this is the main substance of any JavaScript program. But that substance has to be framed in a larger structure to be useful, so that's what we'll cover next. A fragment of code that produces a value is called an expression. Sounds like a vocab word. So I've got another vocab list going for the replit, uh, on replit here. I'm also going to be transferring this to another gist, which I've already created in GitHub, uh, but we'll do most of this here. So an expression, uh, a fragment of code, Also, we've made the change to the HTML version of this. Uh, it seems like it's probably going to be easier. If there's any situation where running it in Replit would prove useful, then I will do that. Uh, but the whole idea of going off of the PDF doesn't really make any sense anymore. Um, mainly because, you know, this is an excellent resource and I want to show you how to use it. Uh, also, if you are going to uh, take the self-guided journey, you know, away from the boot camp or towards another boot camp, uh, which is totally fine, uh, Eloquent JavaScript is an excellent place to start. So knowing how to use this can be a very good thing. Uh, so with that, expression, a fragment of code that produces a value. That sounds like a reasonable definition. It sounds like it's written right there. Anyway, every value that is written literally, such as 22 or psychoanalysis, is an expression. An expression between parentheses is also an expression, as is a binary operator applied to two expressions or a unary operator applied to one. This shows part of the beauty of a language-based interface. Expressions can contain other expressions in a way similar to how subsentences in human languages are nested. A subsentence can contain its own subsentences, and so on. This allows us to build expressions that describe arbitrarily complex computations. If an expression corresponds to a sentence fragment, a JavaScript statement corresponds to a full sentence. A program is a list of statements. The simplest kind of statement is an expression with a semicolon after it. This is a program. One, not false. Excellent. It is a useless program, though. Well, yeah, that's no, pretty useless. An expression can be content to just produce a value, which can be used by the enclosing code. A statement stands on its own, so it amounts to something only if it affects the world. It could display something on the screen that counts as change in the world, or it could change the internal state of the machine in a way that will affect the statements that come after it. These changes are called side effects. Uh, that's another term you're going to hear a lot, so let's go ahead and add that to the vocab list. So a side effect, uh, to change the internal state of the machine. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab this, and we'll say side effect changes uh, the internal state of the machine in a way that will affect, I'm going to put machine in quotes because the machine can refer to a lot of different things. It doesn't actually have to be like the, well, it's almost universally a computer in the traditional sense, but it doesn't actually have to be like a physical machine in a way that will affect the statements that come after it. Uh, I feel like there's one part that I'm missing with that. Uh, so we say side effects. Hmm, maybe like when a statement changes the internal state of the machine in a way that affects the statements that come. Uh, okay, we'll just leave it as this. Anyway. Uh, also, real quick, you'll notice that I'm going to do more and more kind of speculation and opinion forming as we're creating the vocab list, and that's a uh, an on-purpose tactic. Um, so, sorry if it's bothering you or if it's annoying. Um, especially if it's annoying, definitely feel free to skip ahead and miss all of this. Um, but anyway, what we're doing there is trying to get you, the person reading or listening to this, uh, to get used to the idea of thinking really critically about you know, notes you take and things like that. The more we think about the notes that we're taking, the easier it will be for us to try to remember it later or to have some kind of personal connection, uh, real world or otherwise, with the uh, vocab list that we're building. For now, we don't really have anything that we can, you know, add to this. 
but as we go on, perhaps we will. So these changes are called side effects. The statements in the previous example, which is this guy, just produce the values one and true and then immediately throw them away. This leaves no impression on the world at all. When you run this program, nothing observable happens. And we can actually do that. If you click on this, it'll give you the program. If you click on this part of the right, uh, I might want to make this a little bigger. Uh, it's right on the border of too big or not big enough. But anyway, on the right hand side here, if we click this and hit run code, and it's going to say control or command enter. What that means is that if you're on a PC, control and enter. If you're on a Mac, command and enter. So we run it, <clears throat> all of nothing happens. So that's, that's what they mean. Uh, in some cases, yeah, let's go back to that. In some cases, JavaScript allows you to omit the semicolon at the end of a statement. In other cases, it has to be there, or the next line will be treated as part of the same statement. The rules for when it can be safely omitted are somewhat complex and error prone. So in this book, every statement that needs a semicolon will always get one. I recommend you do the same. Excellent advice. At least until you've learned more about the subtleties of missing semicolons. And with that, that's the end of this subsection, so we'll call it there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.